First of all, I would like to thank organizers for inviting me to this conference. Uh, and second, uh, where is this place for control? It's not Ah, you switch this, this, this off. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Yeah, it's, it's, ah, it's, it's switched off, okay. Uh, and second, I, I have to apologize. It's, uh, I'm not uh, anthropologist, so, so my detailed knowledge about the problems I will, I will be talking about is, is not very deep. It's, it's very shallow, in fact. Uh, but I'm a biologist, I'm, I teach evolutionary biology, and I'm a human being, so I, I have to think about our nature. Uh, and my story will start 10 million years ago. I, I, I will add one thing. I will follow uh, the advice by um, Professor Heller, and I, I will add today the one more dimension to this behavior, mind, brain, three dimensions, I will add fourth, fourth dimen dimension, the dimension of evolutionary time. So my story will start 10 million years ago when Africa started to, to dry and cool. And uh, savanna has expanded and tropical rainforest shrinked. Before, uh, now, now this, this area of, of uh, uh, tropical forest is, is, is not, very, not, not very large. And before cooling, uh, apes dominated over monkeys uh, because fruits are crucial for apes. Rape uh, uh, fruits are crucial for, for apes. Uh, and uh, monkeys uh, and, and um, ape, ape sows are more intelligent and very often hunted and still hunt for, uh, for, for monkeys. But after this change, there was high pressure for ripe fruits uh, that are not so common in, in, in forest. And monkey can eat uh, also not ripe uh, fruits and leaves that have tannins. And high pressure, because of competition increased, high pressure for, uh, this, uh, for, for, for this, this fruits made uh, apes uh, less uh, successful. And monkeys started to dominate in, in Africa. Uh, and uh, about seven millions years ago, a population of apes uh, moved to more open area, started to use more intensively open area savanna. Uh, there are some problems on this open area. First of all, there is more predators. And there are no trees to escape. So the best way to, f f f for protection is living in larger groups. I will go to this point in a moment. Uh, but there's also a problem with food. Poor plant food on, on savanna is extremely poor, uh, except seeds and insects that are not very, very common on, on, on savanna. So probably our ancestors, early ancestors, ate a lot of carrion and sometimes also hunted on, on something still, still alive. And there was strong competition with, uh, with uh, 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 leopard, which is the, the only predator in Africa which uh, saves prey. Other, 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 other species eat as much as, as possible and, and leave it to, to other, other, other individuals. Of course, there was also problem of physical environment, hot, direct sun. And here, upright position, 
uh, enormous ability to, to sweat and, to lose, and losing hair was pro probably uh, helpful. Uh, and uh, this upright position, of course, had other uh, advantages, wider horizon when looking for, for predators, and hands ready for work, and to keep arms, uh, sticks at the beginning, and machine guns slightly later. Uh, now about, about living in groups, why, why it, it helps. There are two kinds of groups in nature. I, I will call this kind of groups anonymous groups when, that can be enormous in size, but they don't require very large brains because most animals do not know another by person. So safety is because risk of be, being eaten is spread to many, many, many uh, individuals. But our ancestors lived in structured groups requiring large brains because personal knowledge of other, uh, other individuals is important. It's necessary to make some coalitions in, to be more efficient. And, and at some point, theory of mind allows to predict, uh, uh, appear, and, and it, it, it allows to, to predict the actions of, of other individuals. Uh, in, when I say theory of mind, I mean that, that ability to think, uh, to, to think that I think, I think that he thinks, I, I, I think that he thinks that, that I think, and so on and so on. People are very efficient here. Of course, there's a lot of diversity among people. Some, some are able to go in deep. According to Robin Dunbar in Shakespeare's uh, uh, plays, uh, intrigues have sometimes five orders, and uh, audience is the sixth order in this thinking, uh, in this seer of mind. But of course, not always there is time to analyze situation. What it is possible to do if to, to make fast, fast decision? There are several possibilities. Uh, some persons are probably able to analyze much quicker than, 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 than others. Some people probably skip complex considerations and uh, use intuition. And importantly, many, many people and also animals imitate moves of what other, what other individuals do. So it's not necessary to, to, to undertake all decisions, uh, uh, but, but it's possible to imitate. Uh, brain size probably limits very much group size. Uh, and uh, it's, there are some limits to increase of, of brain size. A brain is extremely expensive. This is, uh, explains why, why most animals have rather small brains. Uh, so probably in development of, of brain, soon energetic limit was achieved. And in my opinion, it was possible to, for, for further evolution of, of brain size, uh, after our ancestor, probably Homo erectus, started to control uh, fire. Because cooked or baked uh, food can be absorbed much more efficiently. So it was probably somewhere between 400,000 and 700,000 years ago. Uh, and, and Homo erectus was very, very successful. It was fir first uh, uh, exodus from Africa, to, to especially to Asia, by this species. The second was by, by, by Homo sapiens. I will, I will not, not talk about it. Uh, so so this, this species was efficient uh, and probably lived at, even at the same time than uh, Homo sapiens, maybe not in, in the same places, but in, in, the, same, in the same time. Uh, 
but soon second limit to brain size was 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 reached. Uh, this is the size of of skull of of infant. Uh, you see, this is the size of pelvis of gorilla, chimpanzee, and so on, and and humans. And this is the size of head. You see how difficult is to to give birth to child in, in our in our species. It's impossible to it, it was impossible to go any farther with brain size. And even with this brain size it's impossible for most women to give birth without help of other women. So social life was, was important at that point. But but there was still pressure for increase of group size and what is necessary to increase brain size. So the only solution, evolutionary solution, was to, uh, to move some part of brain development to after birth period. And we are the species with extremely small, small size, uh, brain size at birth comparing to adult size, and extremely long time for uh, uh, extremely long childhood. So there's a lot of time but dangerous time, of course, for development. And advantage of this is that there's more time for social learning. Uh, all animals living in structured groups have one serious problem, the problem of inbred. Uh, this problem is solved usually in a very simple way. One sex is living group, usually males in most animals. But um, this has some disadvantages. Because uh, if, if, if males di disappear, multigenerational relationships uh, cannot be too strong. And uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is the one point. And uh, some, one sex is lost from the development of social relations. We must remember about this problem that must be solved. Uh, probably at the beginning, troops of our ancestors could not be larger than 20 to 30 individuals. These troops were probably dynamic. Some, some families were leaving, some families were, were, were uh, uh, coming to, to such a groups. Maybe this was enough to, to avoid inbred. Uh, but this, 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 this kind of, of structure uh, is comparable to capuchin monkeys. When there are some groups, there are no territories. Some groups can uh, the, the groups communicate, and they are some, sometimes more hostile, some, sometimes more, more friendly. I think that the same was in, in, in our species. So. Groups were meeting sometimes, and some negotiations are, are, were, were necessary. Uh, and uh, and what's, what was, was important, probably there, there was exchange, there, there were negotiations about some resources, especially access to water, which is, which is very, very, well, very important. But I think that also there was exchange of adolescent uh, males and females to uh, to, to make families and to uh, avoid inbred, uh, inbred uh, problem. Uh, but at some point, I believe that a, a tribe evolved and it was great invention because uh, it, those groups that, that were better in cooperation with other groups could uh, uh, probably were more successful because not lions and uh, leopards were soon uh, uh, the, best, uh, the, the most dangerous enemy. The most dangerous enemies was, were other troops. If, if space was, was f more or less filled with, with our ancestors, uh, uh, some hominins, uh, probably this, the, this was the most important to, to find place to extend territories and so on, and cooperation between, between troops was important. But 
integrating mechanisms are very important for, for integration of, 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 such, of such troops. And we know that the, the probably very early evolved common rituals, myths, common knowledge, rules, taboos, everything is important, if it, but it, it gives ability to, to, to distinguish between one of us and, and stranger. And this mechanism can protect against free riders that can come, take advantage of being in group and giving nothing to, to a group. Uh, so, uh, and the most important, I think, is, is that the tribe was, tribes were large enough to keep still some relatedness, which is, of course, advantages for the de for development of, of um, some, some common, um, some cooperation, but at the same time to, to avoid inbred. So, in my opinion, group selection played a role in evolution of, of uh, humans or, or, or hominids before our species appeared. Uh, group selection is not effective in most species because of the problem of free riding, of animals that come to, to the group and take advantage without cooperating. Because our ancestors uh, were able to distinguish between we and stranger uh, and could punish selfish behavior, such a group selection was possible. I mean that it, if a tribe was successful, it was getting larger and larger and larger, was able to conquer other, other tribes in our world force. So, but, but this, is, this is, you know, ultimate evolutionary mechanism. But we cannot imagine that in complex situation, when complex analysis is required, it is possible to, is, is it enough time to, to analyze everything, to, to make decision, to undertake decision. I think that this, it must be translated to much simpler uh, system, and this is probably, reward punishment system in, in our brain. We, we, don't we do, do not reproduce to spread our genes, but we reproduce because sex gives pleasure or at least release us from the tension of not having sex. We don't eat to, to survive. We eat because eating is, gives pleasure and uh, be hunger is uh, not, not nice. You know how, how dangerous is if, if this uh, system breaks down in anorexia. It doesn't matter that we, we explain that you must eat because you will die. It's not so easy. As long as such a system works properly, everything is, is okay. But how to train such a system? Of course, primitive natural, natural ways is just that pain, it's necessary to avoid something that, that, that is painful and repeat everything which, which gives, gives pleasure. But in social rules, of course, it is not enough. So parents, parents must to, to, to teach some rules and first method is probably physical punishment. The other method is warning about future negative consequences of something which will be done, or informing about, about rewarding, uh, about f f future rewards. Uh, and of course, sometimes such teachers invoke to reason, reasoning, but very often they try to frighten about some, some those. So there's no problem if reward, uh, if, if, if an action gives punish, is, is good now and good in future or, or will have con poor consequences now and in the future. But 
Very often, something which is nice now will give future very poor consequences and vice versa. How to solve this problem? It's, I think there's no, 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 uh, no, no simple solution. I think that we can think this way. Now, something which is now is advantageous. In the future, there is some punishment. And people differ in how much weight they give to the future. I think that this uh, marshmallow test could, could uh, distinguish how people think about, about this. And in, some, in the same situation, some person will choose don't do it, and some uh, do it. This mechanism is still exploited in, in our societies. This picture gives, gives this, 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 this uh, illustrates this. That, that some people are think always, well, it will be far away, so, so, so a lot of time we can do it. And others think about, about these consequences. But, so there are two tensions. One tension is that uh, uh, that, that sometimes uh, what is good for fitness, and fitness is measured in, in, in the ability of spreading genes, not always maximizes the proportion of winners. Optim to be optimal doesn't mean that, that, uh, that, that, that winning is, is most, most common. It, it means that on average it gives, gives the best, best results. I will not analyze because I have no time this, this, this example. Uh, well, it was tension. So this is, this is another tension, yeah. And the tension three is, is, is most, most serious for societies because something which is good for an, an individual and its, its ability to spread genes is not necessarily good for, for a group. Uh, so it must exist some, some, some it's, it's, there is need for, for enforcing some proper behaviors and uh, some methods by direct punishment, by taboos, or by fear. Fear, very often, fear of gods. Parents use these this methods and say sometimes in, 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 in individual education, says that, well, if you don't do it, some uh, boggy, boggy uh, uh, men will take you away, or like an animal. So, very often, this is the stranger face of this, this so, 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 so of this body man. In, in, in social behavior, I think that, that theory of mind is extended to theory of God's mind, and it can be helpful to enforce proper rules. I don't mean that God uh, 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 doesn't exist. It only means that, that even if, if it does, doesn't exist, it is possible that religious mind could, could evolve. Uh, so so, so it, it certainly helps to, to follow some, some, some uh, social rules. Uh, and of course, to, for, for, for groups to, to, to work, to, to co-work consistently, some social vir virtues are necessary. To, and, and probably somewhere the, the idea of honor and respect have to, uh, have to, to evolve. Uh, uh, I, I will skip it. Uh, we must remember that so social rules are transmitted culturally not genetically. I mean that genes are responsible for our ability to have culture and to transfer culture. But cultural rules are not uh, inherited on in Darwinian way, but on Lamarckian way. First of all, acquired rules can be passed to the next generations. And it makes this ev cultural evolution so, so, so rapid. Uh, and many of these rules must, must serve to eliminate free riders because they can uh, this, uh, be harmful to, to any society. Uh, I will skip this because
times is going on. But I would like to say that diversity is very important for any tribe because it must be different characters must be in some, some proper proportions. Uh, and there are some genetic and probably some c cultural rules that, that provide this, this mechanism. And group selection was, was, could, could be also important because tribes that have had too many warriors, not uh, um, shamans and so on, probably uh, were less successful than, than tribes that had everything in, in, proper, uh, in proper proportions. Uh, okay. I think that even it must exist diversity in obeying rules, because if everyone obeys rules, plasticity, plasticity is very low. If not too many people, too many members of a group don't obey rules, such a group cannot, such, such rules will break down and group will not, will not, not uh, operate properly. So it must be optimum on, on this. And I think we should not forget about it when we, even if we think about current situation. Uh, but to, for, for all these things to evolve, at some level, language had to, to appear. And uh, of course, I, I will present my idea, not my idea, idea I like on, 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 on the evolution of language. First of all, I'm sure that music was earlier than, than, than language in, 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 in strict sense. Uh, and it could uh, start very, very easy way, coordinated action against predator to, together with coordinated voice and so on and so on, probably would, uh, there's no, no predator that, that would withstand with uh, such a pressure and probably each, 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 each would uh, escape. So, my hypothesis is that music preceded language and it was giving pleasure. And if it started to give, give pleasure to our brains, to brains of our ancestors, it, it was used for many, many purposes. So there's no way to, there's no reason to discuss whether, it, whether music was for seducing the opposite sex or seducing babies and so, and so on. Everything probably is true here. Uh, of course, it, dance was used very often in sexual selection and probably all these mechanisms were also important for tribe identity, which is extremely important. And music has something with mathematics. Uh, I, uh, years ago when my son was attending uh, Casio school, I asked his uh, teacher, uh, a composer, if there's something common between music and mathematics. And his answer was, well, music is mathematics. But of course, it's mathematics we don't see. We don't, it's covered uh, somewhere. But probably it, uh, music could uh, prepare some, some brain structures for understanding mathematics. So I think that music is a nat natural mathematics. And there is a lot of work on, 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 on this. Uh, but of course, counting itself is, music is for pleasure, counting is useful. Counting was useful to divide uh, some goods between, between group members, to compare strengths of competing groups, and maybe even fractions were important to estimate relatedness between tribe members, which is important to avoid uh, in inbred. Uh, mathematics is very old. You probably know these pieces of bone with uh, notches of giving some prime numbers and uh, rules of duplication and so on and so on. Uh, mathematics is developing slowly. Probably no, no, new, no new brain structures are, are required to develop mathematics is going 
are on a spiral higher and higher and higher, and some persons are, are able to go farther, some not. But at some, well, there, there's questions that, that music is so similar to, to bird song. There are two possibilities. There's other something in common with uh, uh, in, in brain structure, or just music was stolen from, from birds. Certainly, listening to, to birds was very important to survive because they give information about uh, they give information about many things about uh, environment, uh, predators that they are around, and so on and so on. And probably, voice Im imitating voice of birds was also important because it was possible to communicate this weight without saying. That we, without giving signs that, 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 that it's, it was used probably by, by hunters. Uh, so, in general, there are two ways of, of communication songs, dances, music, music and ape like communication system with different sounds assigned to different the different objects. Even in, in monkeys, such a system, of course, uh, works in, uh, in other social animals as well. And the hypo hypothesis is that the real language originated when these two methods melted, met and melted, some way, some, some, maybe some mutation, maybe it was. Uh, so language can use hidden mathematical structure of music, which is important. No new structure is necessary. Uh, we know that speech is a kind of more or less degenerated de de music, and uh, shatterers have more difficulties, especially when they are in stress, in speech than, than with singing. Uh, and uh, recently it was discovered that, that, that genes responsible for hu human, spe human speech are closer, closer to genes responsible for bird song, so singing than for ape communication. It may look, uh, it may look uh, very, uh, oops, uh, speculative, but listen for a while. And read what is this? There is there is communication and song. There's there's communication but by song. If you listen to this, uh, you see that, uh, that there is. Uh, there is communication about position, about there is a lot of information in these songs. Okay, I will try to, to stop it. <laughs> and. You know, there is a strength in the number. I mean that special gifts are quite rare. The gifts have, have uh, ab different abilities, have something like normal distribution. And, uh, you know, especially gifted people in some area, music, mathematics, and so on, are very rare somewhere here. So in large groups, there's more likely that they will appear. So tribe size, Successful tribes were large, and you know that it's Saint Matthew principle. They could have more gifted people and be more successful and larger and larger and larger. And there's another. It is another point. 
such gifted people in one, one direction and of, or, or very often have some, some def defects in other directions and large groups can support them and in small groups they probably would not, not survive. This is the example of very gifted people you probably know about. Uh, so, conclusions. Uh, this presented scenario had many, many positive feedbacks. So this is the reason that, that our species evolves, evolves so socially so, so rapidly. Uh, and uh, evolution from apes to modern humans, in, according to this scenario, could proceed step by step without any main large change, any big mutation that changes something. So this is, and the usual evolution works, works this, this way. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so, so if we think evolutionary about our mind now, everything seems, seems uh, of course everything is very, very complex, but we can explain how with very, very, many, many, very, very small steps could, it could, could appear. So, thank you very much. In one of your slides, you mentioned the fact that you, you may have diversity in obeying norms, right? So you said that actually you, you have societies where a small, small portion of the population disobey norms, right? This makes the system, as if I understand, right? This makes the system more adapt, adaptive and, and flexible. So, uh, I mean, you, so you are saying that, you are saying that uh, we need somehow a certain degree of, of violations of norms to make the system flexible, uh, which is quite quite understandable. Because suppose we all apply norms literally and strictly, you know. Suppose that you have office hours from eight to in, in the morning to six in the afternoon, and a, a students come to my office and say, "Look, can you explain me to me, you know, this stuff?" And, and start explaining about what five comes. I say, sorry, it's five o'clock, I have to leave. Suppose we apply literary norms every day, you know, the system would collapse very, very soon. So is it, is it, is it your point? Is it the point? Yes, that yes, in general, this is, this is my point. But, you know, if you have uh, somebody working at uh, 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 railway, you prefer more obedience, of course. So, so people with different uh, uh, level of uh, obeying rules, I think that the, 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 this diversity is, is, uh, is, is important. Now, I don't mean that, 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 that any, yeah, yeah, it is general this, this point, yeah. The role of free riders? Uh, by free riders, I, I mean people uh, or animals in, in animal groups that uh, uh, can come into, into the group from outside usually, or not, not necessarily, or change behavior and don't obey rules. Don't, don't obey rules that are good for group. And, uh, uh, and they can but, but you know, if, if, if they are not recognized, uh, they take advantage of uh, burglar, burglars, for example. They, they, they are free riders from, from some other countries. They come to our country, ask for money, and they exploit our behavior that evolved in small groups, in villages, 
we know that it's necessary to help other people. Yeah? So free rider can exploit such, a, such behaviors and uh, give nothing to, to the society because, because in, in small groups it was expected uh, that uh, they, they will give back if, if they are in better situation. But they are not going to, 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 to give anything back because, because they are free riders, yeah. Uh, these free riders, yeah. and they move from group to, to group, and and, and uh, they they be, before they are recognized and uh, pushed away, exiled, they spread genes very often because they may be very successful in seducing uh, uh, some some people. So this is a kind of game, if, 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 if gaming probably in 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 space and and time. It's not, not very strange that different strategies can coexist. And you know, groups that were completely not open to people from outside were not probably successful as well. Because such new people from other groups had another knowledge that could be uh, exploited. So I think there is some optimum for tolerance to strangers. On one slide, you mentioned the problem of group selection. And um, as I understood from your speech, you are generally the supporter of this idea of group selection. But only for humans. Only for humans. OK, we are talking about humans. Only, so. only about the yeah. humans. But that's exactly my question, because you mentioned that the idea uh, originally emerged in 1960s, and then it fall. It was generally rejected by most of the biologists, evolutionary biologists. And one of the reasons which you mentioned is that there is no reasonable mathematical model which could stay behind this idea. And my question is, could you please a little bit elaborate on that? Uh, because as far as I know, it's still rejected by most of the biologists. And the idea is very interesting because it, uh, it lays behind uh, a lot of uh, political uh, ideas like uh, the emergence of normative order which uh, was uh, described by Friedrich August von Hayek. So the question is what is the, the, the state now among the evolutionary biologists? Uh, are they divided or do they support the idea of group selection or it's still being rejected by most of them? It's still rejected by, by most biologists. There are some trials to introduce it, it back. But, but really, this, this lack of mathematical, of, of efficient mathematical model explaining this is important. I, I will have we time, not too much time. Uh, uh, you know, if model works, usually it's very easy to find parameters to, 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 to let, 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 let it work. And here, these parameters must be, must be very, very special because the main problem is that there is a group and a migrant comes to the group. So this f free riding problem. And this, this free rider takes advantage of uh, not selfish behavior within a group, but is selfish. So it's, it parasites on a group. So, so this is the main reason. Without getting right of, of, of these free riders, it's impossible to, to, for group selection to work. And I don't know any case in animal kingdom that, that there exists efficient me mechanism of, of, uh, of getting right of free riders. And in humans, it seems very obvious that, 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 that this mechanism works. Fine. So if I get it right, we have still the problems with free riders. So if we introduce to the mathematical model as the one free rider, so then uh, there are chances that the model mm -hmm. will collapse. So it's not yeah, stable it's enough. It's not, st not evolutionary state. Okay. And what is dangerous at the present state of our our, our world, that we don't live in troops and in small groups, in small villages, but in global society. 
but you see this free riding everywhere now. And we have to use completely different methods to fight, fight them against. I mean, uh, it's necessary to, uh, to use law and enforcing law. It's not enough to, to, to formulate some, some law, law rules. It's necessary to enforce it. Uh, it's completely different situations that it used to be in past. But our minds were, why at that time we still have some tendencies that, that, uh, and rules that, that, that were, were quite set time, not, not now. And that free riders is, you know, it's, it's very, very dangerous problem. <laughs>